Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our final thought for the day for this week. It's Friday morning. I hope you're well. It's been great to have you with us this week, and it's lovely to have you with us this morning. I hope you had a good week. I hope you enjoyed what we've talked about this week, the way God has loved us. And we started off the week, didn't we think, behold, what manner of love that Christ has given to us, a wonderful love that God shows us, and how we should respond to that by battling with sin and, and dealing with that in our lives and keeping short accounts with God. And then we've, we've, we've uh, seen last couple of days about how then we should love each other as brothers and sisters, um, not being like Cain and not being you know um, arrogant with that, not being careless with our love. But yesterday we were looking at the generosity and the wonderful nature of God, the love that loves like Jesus does. And a real call to arms for us, a real challenge for us, but a wonderful thing and how it benefits us because it gives us this wonderful, cheerful heart, doesn't it? An amazing thing, isn't it? And so we finish off this week by looking at what a cheerful at, at the cheerful heart. And sometimes, although all that sounds brilliant, we don't actually live up to what we're supposed to be. We don't love like Jesus. And sometimes it's not as good as it should be. And we recognise that. So what happens then? And John, John's theme throughout these letters, uh, and particularly this first letter, is that we might know, that we might have confidence and assurance that we do belong to Jesus because remember the world John's living in it's a hostile world just like ours but a world of Greek thinking and Greek thought which talks about this Gnostic thinking where some people know more than others and there's a kind of hierarchy and a lot of people just don't know enough to be able to know God and so they're kind of rejected a bit really and and it's kind of a knowledge thing an intellect thing really and uh, it was very destructive to people people never felt they could get anywhere near God and uh, John is writing to the Christians there who were regarded as kind of not thinkers and, and sort of ordinary people. And, and the, the Gnostics would look down on them. And John wants them to realise that they can know the God who, who the Gnostics are trying to get to know through their own efforts. He, 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 they can know this God personally and love like him and live like him. And these are evidences that we might know that. And one of those is a cheerful heart, isn't it? But before we go any further, that's quite a big introduction this morning. Before we go any further, let's pray and then we'll get into the text for this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this week and for the reminder of your love for us and the reminder of how we ought to love each other as well. And once again, Lord, we pray that you'd, you'd help us as we gather around your word this morning. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So verses 19 down to 24. We're not going to read them all this morning. Um, but these verses are all on, as I say, on John's theme. He wants us he wants us to have confidence, to be assured, to be joyful, to have a cheerful heart uh, in the way that we serve God. And so to 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 rest in, in that knowledge that we can have in uh, and in one sense to show how much more superior it is to that idea of Gnosticism, which means it's all dependent upon us and how much we know, whereas this love that this relationship with God that they can have uh, John is saying is, is not reliant on us it's reliant on what God has done for us let's read again this morning verse 19 this is how we know again he said this so many times and he starts a lot of these thoughts with this phrase this is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his president presence rather if our hearts condemn us we know that God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything and then he goes on to explain that a little bit further just want to unpack that a little bit this morning before we finish this week you know i don't know about you but sometimes when you look at this and you read god's word and you look at the world around us and you see what's happening you can't it's easy to have doubts isn't it and we all have doubts sometimes and our hearts aren't really if we're honest as cheerful as they should be we try to love like jesus but our sin drags us down and we feel like we've failed and we've messed up and we feel like we're not good enough. We look at other Christians and perhaps compare ourselves to them. We don't love like them. We don't know as much as them. We don't pray like them. And, and all of those things happen uh, in our lives. And it's enough. To, it can get us down. And Satan will use those things to try and beat us down a little bit and make us feel like we're inferior in some way. That's not what God says to us. We're all the same before God, aren't we? You remember we talked about his love, which was uh, which was generous and unconditional. It's grace, isn't it? And so he sees us all in his grace and all of us need to recognise his grace. If we, the minute we start thinking that we've earned it, we become a bit more like Cain, thinking that we can do whatever we want. And uh, and that's not the way it is. God is gracious and we all need to recognise ourselves as, um, like Job says, naked that we come from our mother's womb. 
and we stand before God naked and embarrassed and with all our faults and failings on show, every single one of us, uh, whoever we are. And so that's that's kind of the, the important thing. And so John says, despite the fact that we are in this way, we do let God down and we do fail. And sometimes our hearts can condemn us because we listen to our hearts. Hearts is, can be cheerful. But it's not always that way. Sometimes, as, as um, it, it, the Old Testament tells us, that uh, it can be deceptive and, t and desperately wicked. It can deceive us and be terribly wicked and, and accuse us. And we listen to our hearts and we feel terrible and we feel down and what have you. So that's what John's going on about when he says our hearts condemn us. We feel like we failed. And, and the, the arena particularly here John's speaking about is in, the, in our prayer life. And if there's one area of our Christian life that makes us feel like failures often it's our prayer time isn't it really in verse 22 because he talks about if you have anything you talking about anything you ask and, and and so i think he's thinking of prayer here and it's in our prayer life that we get exposed whether we have a desire to pray whether we pray very long or we, we seem to pray all around the world or we don't seem to focus on prayer or we struggle with it i don't know a, a christian who doesn't it hasn't or doesn't at some level struggle with the whole area of prayer because Satan knows how, how powerful that is, not necessarily to get things done in heaven, but to actually to get things done on earth. That is, it, it is in heaven. Isn't it? That's what we pray. That as we pray, we are uniting ourselves and aligning ourselves with God's will. We're hearing something of God's heart. We're submitting ourselves to him. And therefore, he fills us with the spirit and helps us to grow. But, but getting into that moment of prayer sometimes can be really difficult. And our hearts can condemn us because we haven't done uh, what we should do or we don't think we're as good as we should be and so our hearts are always exposed in prayer aren't they they're always exposed in that secret place do i love others enough am i obedient enough to god ha i've sinned here i've sinned there and that little voice in our head all the time accusing us that's what satan is described as in the bible as the accuser of the people of God he accuses us of being not good enough and he's right in a way but God we he, he forget he doesn't he tries to hide us away from God's wonderful grace it comes in, in in opposition to that and so John responds to all of this in verse 20 the second part but our confidence that we get comes from this God is greater than our hearts that's why he says it he's bigger than my heart he understands my heart. he gave me it in the first place and he understands how I feel and knows everything isn't that amazing that's uh, now that could be seen as a threat he understands my heart he knows what my secret thoughts are he knows everything and we could feel condemned by that and satan would try and turn that wonderful thought on its head and make us feel under the weight of it and again our hearts could condemn us but actually what john is saying because god knows everything and because god is greater than our hearts you know he, he's he's okay with all of that he understands it and he takes account of all of that as well and he knows that we're trying to walk. He knows the deepest in our hearts as children of God. Our desire is that we really do want to walk in the light, but we struggle with it. We really do want to love like Jesus, but we struggle with it. We fail and we feel terrible because we're failing. And God knows that those deep inner longings of your heart and the deep doubts and fears and worries and things. He knows them all. Uh, that's what that verse means, doesn't it, really? So uh, our confidence is based on Christ's word. God is bigger than our heart. He's full of grace. He knows. And John's purpose of writing this is that we might know as well, not just in our hearts, but in, in the reality of the situation. So he comes back to a theme. We read it in verse, 20, uh, verse 19, the first verse we read. It says we need to get to a place where we settle our hearts at rest. We need to settle our hearts will be cheerful when we're settled in our hearts. So how does he mean by that? And it goes back to what we said something perhaps last week, I think it was, where we know what we believe and we believe what we know. So the solution is setting our hearts at rest. We remind ourselves of what we know of God and his promises and his word. That's why it's so important that we stick with God's word and we stick with what God has said and we read it, don't we? And we look at the, the evidence. It might be shaky evidence, but we look at the evidence in our lives have I a desire to follow God's will? Yes, it is. It might not always be there and I might not always do it, but I have a desire for that. I have a desire to put God's words into practice in my life. I have a desire to love other people like Jesus loved other people. I might fail in all of those areas at different times, but I have that desire and rest assured that that desire would not be within me to do things God's way, to do the right thing, as John says, unless his Holy Spirit had put it in my heart. And John finishes with that. 
He reminds us that God has given us his Holy Spirit to help us and to confirm with us and to witness with us that we are children of God. God helps us through his Holy Spirit. Verse 24 there at the end. So I don't know how your heart is at the end of this week. It's been thrilling to see how God loves us. It's been challenging to see how we ought to love one another uh, and the warnings that we have not to be like Cain. How is your heart at the end of this week? I'm sure all of us at some times have harboured doubts and fears and worries and felt that we're not good enough and all the rest of it. Be encouraged this morning. John says that we can be confident. We can rest in God's amazing grace. We can settle these things in our heart through God's Holy Spirit by letting our Holy Spirit teach us his word as, as we've been doing each morning as we gather around it in these days. So I trust that's been helpful for you again this morning. Let's pray together, shall we? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word to us. Thank you for the encouragement. And we pray, Lord, that you'd help us to be settled in our hearts on your truth, that you would make us, uh, give us hearts that are cheerful and at peace with you. And Lord, help us where we fall to pick us up and to rest in your amazing grace. And uh, Lord, we ask that you would help us to be those people who are live like children of God. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.